Should we start? Okay, so welcome back. Thanks for um, staying tuned. So last time, uh, um, so first of all, I changed the program a little bit. I will first like to um, discuss um, the appearance of non-abelian gauge symmetry in F-theory, both from the point of view of M-theory and the elliptic vibration. And then in terms of PQ brains, which is entirely in type 2B language, but as it turns out, um, the very, um, uh, well, not, not so easy to handle PQ brains are automatically incorporated into F-theory, which is one of the um, nice things that it's entirely geometric there. Um, then we will go back to the Weierstrass model uh, and fill in some gaps with it, which I didn't want to put in um, right at the beginning. In particular, we will identify the, the, the seven brain tadpole condition in some sense as a consequence of n equal one supersymmetry or the Calabi-Yau property. And then we will apply the Weierstrass model to the simplest case, to F-theory on K3, which would be type 2B compactification on P1, discuss the Zen limit and see how to recover our PQ brains, which we introduced before. Probably I won't have much time to um, go into details of uh, the more technical version of the Weierstrass model, the, the Tate model, which is being used um, in, in concrete applications then in Calabria fourfold. So last time we saw that F theory is described as some hypothetical theory on an elliptic Calabria fourfold, if we are interested in compactifications to four um, dimensions. This is an elliptic vibration over a three complex dimensional base. We can think of it as um, a hypersurface, for example, in some say weighted projective space, but this is uh, ju just to um, for, um, this is just one particular type of such um, vibration, which gives rise to the Weierstrass model. So the torus we think of as being spanned as a, a constraint in um, weighted projective space P two three one, given by these coordinates. On the base, we can think of having some local coordinates U i, and then the Weierstrass model embeds. Um, this Calabria fourfold in this manner into, um, into these coordinates. In particular, we um, found that um, when the discriminant vanishes, um, the torus um, becomes singular, and the um, complex structure of the torus can be ex expressed via this um, Jacobi um, function in terms of f and g in this manner. So if delta picks up a singularity of type n on some locus on the base, say a, a, um, a four cycle, then tau scales like n times the logarithm um, around, uh, around, this, um, around this locus. So this means um, uh, that, that basically we have n um, charges of C0 localized there, or n seven brains. So now how about um, the symmetry? So as we said, if we have a single brain, then the torus degenerates in some obscure way, and I stick to drawing it in this manner, insinu uh, insinuating that um, a one cycle um, shrunk to zero. The point is now, as we have several brains, as we said, then we pick up an actual singularity, namely the so-called ADE singularity, along the divisor S given by our, by our seven brains. And this actual singularity leads to then ADE type or more general types of gauge symmetry on the seven brain. So um, how, can we, how can we think of the symmetry coming about intuitively? Well, consider um, what happens as we take two single brains together. So we we have here our two, we have two brains, two seven brains. This is our space. We think of the seven brains going in this direction. So we have brain D1, brain D2. So now here we said the fiber degenerates, a one cycle pinches off, same thing here. And for the time being, we consider the same cycle degenerating over the two brains. This is important. So. On, now, on the line between the two brains, over this line, this cycle, which has become zero here, grows again. So what we get is we get a one cycle vibration over this line. So here we have a cycle. And this is one cycle of the full torus, or the, the non-degenerate torus, torus which we have here. So over here, we have a full torus. And this cycle, say the A cycle in this case, has shrunk to zero on these two parts. So we, we, we find a two cycle 
let's call it, I don't know, let's <coughs> call it gamma. We find a two cycle gamma, which is this one cycle vibration over the distance. And this two cycle is such that it lies, so to speak, half in the fiber and half on the base. So um, we could think that if we um, consider the dual two form of this two cycle, then this would have one leg along the fiber and one leg along the base B. If we, have, if, we have, if we think of a two-form as the dual two-form to this two-cycle, okay. then locally it, it would have one component, so one, what would you call it, one index. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so the important point about this cycle, and, and this cycle um, comes about only because of the position of the two brains, but only because this, this one cycle degenerates. Yeah, otherwise, it wouldn't be, it, it wouldn't be a proper um, closed cycle. So from this cycle, we get two types of massless states, or uh, two, two types of states. Um, for the, um, first, from M theory by dimensional reduction. So first of all, we can reduce the three form of M theory along this cycle. Sorry, Tim. So I'm supposed to view this is, this is in the M theory picture reducing to 3D, not in the F theory picture. If you like. And then, yeah, uh, uh, yes, I, I'm using F M theory duality now, yes. So um, we can, first of all, reduce C3 along the cycle gamma. So this will give rise to a, so we, we, um, we integrate this over this two cycle. This will give rise to a, to a mass, to, to, a, to a state with one vector index in then four dimensions. So we will get from this a vector a mu, and this vector we can think of as one linear combination of the two U1s, which in seven brain language we would get on U1, uh, on D1 and on D2. Can I just, so this would give rise to a U1 diagonal, so say, of U1, D1, and U1, D2. So in seven brain language, just a second, in, in seven brain language, or in type 2b language, we would think that on each seven brain we get one localized u1. In FM theory, this is not so true anymore. We have we we need to consider um, linear combinations of the two ones, which then necessarily are non-localized. Some of them disappear because they become massive. Others remain, and in this case, we would get one combination massless remaining, and this would be now uh, the non-localized field from the brain point of view that we get by, by reduction here. This is one half of the story. Yes, why do you say the cycle uh, gamma has one leg and it will perform one leg along the fiber? Because, because the cycle, it's, it's, the, it's a one cycle here and it goes also in the B direction. Okay. Oh. So I, I thought that this is easier, it's easier to say this way. We don't need the statement. I just wanted to use this as a further explanation of what I mean that the cycle is not entirely in the fiber and not entirely in the, in the base. So um, if this is a harmonic cycle, we get, we, give, we get a massless state, a massless U1. But we can also wrap an, a membrane, an M2 brain, along this cycle, actually in two, by two possible orientations. So we get two states. So we can wrap an M2 membrane along gamma with two orientations. And this will give rise to two, in general, now in this situation, massive particles in 4D. They are massive here because the cycle has non-zero volume. But of course, the idea is that as we, as we let these two brains approach one another, these extra two states become massless and are responsible for the enhancement of this U1 diagonal to, in this case, SU2. So as the brains approach each other, um, U1D, so to speak, is enhanced by SU2 as the volume of gamma goes to zero, and the membrane states um, become massless. 
So this is the geometric origin of the, um, of, of, of the non-abelian gauge degrees of freedom, these extra, um, these extra membranes. Um, this is geometric, the, the physical origin. So geometrically, what happens is that as the two brains approach each other, it turns out that the whole space becomes singular. I'm just repeating um, these statements. So um, there appears an ADE singularity at this point, which comes about by, yeah, by, by combining this zero size volume, uh, this zero volume two cycle together with, say, one, uh, um, one, one fiber which we have over, over the seven brain, and which, as we recall in F-theory, has zero volume anyways. Uh, how, do we, how do we know that these massive particles are, are vectors in the, in the 4D theory? Like, why can't they be the scalars? The, the way how they couple, they, I, I think they, so their, their interactions are, are such are given by the inter inter intersections of these, um, or that, that charges are given by the intersections of these um, of these cycles, which will identify them as, as the bosons of the. Which, which okay, yeah, that's also a good point. Yes, thank you. Timo, is a simple way to understand this U1 as an isometry of some symmetry of some part of the space, or is it? I wouldn't think so. It, it's. It's not. It's not the. It's not a geometric U1, which. The, it's not. It's not. It's the analog of the brain U1. Yeah, it's more well, this would be the geometric. No, I would. Say, so, in, if you have a D brain, then the U1 are just the massless, stri massless strings from the brain to itself. They wouldn't have. I wouldn't say that they have a geometric interpretation in this case. And this is just the analog here. So the confusing thing is that the U1 is not localized. But if, you, if, you, if you're fine with that, then. No, no, it's just a little I fully agree. So the, the membranes are, this, are the string stretched between. If, 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 if you never had a problem with the appearance of U1, then, 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 then everything's fine. I, I, personally, I was confused a little bit for some time. But. If you're happy, that's good. So, um, so mathematically, we have we have a singularity as we approach these brains, and the correct or a hand waving way to to to, say, um, to to phrase this um, now is as follows: the singularity can be resolved. By resolving it, one pastes in certain p ones, and these p ones so. We have to, one has to paste in as many p1s as one has uh, as as the rank of the gauge group which we will get, and it turns out that the the p1s together with the overall t2 which we got from from here intersect like the extended Dinkin diagram of the corresponding gauge group. So um, so now let's generalize. Suppose we take two n brains together of the same type, of the same PQ type, then we, have, can, we, we get a singularity and we can resolve the singularity. <coughs> By pasting in P1s, this is, this is loosely speaking, there is a much more precise way to phrase it, but let's not go into, into the details. The point is that at the end, we will have for n brains, we will, in the vibration over s at the singular um, at the singular point, we will have n p n special p ones. They have the property that none of these p ones lies entirely in the base or entirely in the fiber, but the, they lie lie both ends, similar to similar to um, the cycle I drew here. The sum of these P1s homologically becomes the sum of the fiber, bec uh, becomes the class of the fiber. And, the e and these N P1s intersect like the extended Dankin diagram, in this case, of A N minus 1. So they intersect in this manner, E1 up to E N minus 1 E N. This is the extended Dinkin of a n minus 1, 
which corresponds, of course, in this case to gauge group SUN or al algebra SUN. And the point is now, out of these P1s, which we have gotten by resolution, so in the, in the singular case, all of them are massless. By resolving, I mean that we can blow them up to, to, to take into account what, what different states we get by wrapping, by, by wrapping mem membranes, etc. But the point is, out of this extended Dinkin diagram, we can now isolate the actual Dinkin diagram. So now we take certain lin uh, suitable linear combinations of these EI, gamma 1 up to gamma n minus 1. In this case, this would just be the E1 up to n minus 1 that form just the Dinkin diagram of a n minus 1. And now we can reduce both the tree form and the membranes, and the membranes, the M2 brains, along these cycles as follows. We can reduce, first of all, C3 along, these, along gamma i. This will give us the Cartan of SUN, so U1 n minus 1, because we have n minus 1 of these to reduce our three form on. And we can reduce the membrane on any homological sum of two of these P1s. So any sum of these two P1s will again be a, a, a physical P1. So we can have the membrane, the M2, along the sum gamma i plus gamma j, where i smaller than or equal to j. And we count both orientations. So we get n minus 1 times n minus 2 states from the ones starting and ending on different p1s plus, or wrapping two, two different p1s plus 2 because of the orientation n minus 1. And altogether, these n, n minus 1 plus these number of states add up to the n squared minus 1 generators of SUN. <coughs> one could, but this would then be some, linear, some different linear combination, say, of, of, of states. This is one way how to get this, um, the, the basis of, or, the, or, or this full set of generators. The, the others would then be a linear combination of the gluons, if, if, if that makes sense. If I just think about separating the brains in terms of the, the gauge theory, I think of that as moving on the Coulomb branch, and so it's some deformation of the theory. Is doing this blow up also yes. a deformation of the theory? Yes, exactly. This will exactly <laughs> force you to go or, or put you on the Coulomb branch. And you end up then with u1 n minus 1, because the, the, the three form doesn't care whether or not the cycle has zero volume. Well, it, it only cares about it if, if it's a well-defined harmonic cycle. But the membranes, they become massive, okay. because they are killed. OK, so this is, this is how one can pictorially think about the emergence of SUN gauge groups. And the important thing was that we put together brains of the same PQ type here. So now, from a geometric perspective, we, we saw this is, this is just, so to speak, the singularity type that, that, that we might get at, at certain points on, on our elliptic vibrations. But mathematicians have classified all possible singularities that can arise. And of course, they, they saw, as the, or Kodaira found, that not only uh, the Dinkin diagram of, of um, um, unitary um, um, gauge groups, special unitary gauge groups, um, arises, but also of, D, of the D and E series. And um, in, in general, also um, 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 the, the other simply laced ones, like, like F and G groups, can, can appear. Uh, yeah. So, um, so Kodaira found on K3 the possible singularities, the ones that do not destroy the color pro property, give us the full ADE series. And in higher co-dimension, 
there can be more new effects. So this was then generalized by Tate and made accessible to the physics community by um, the 1906 paper of Bershatsky and collaborators. So generalizations to higher dimensional Calabiaus. And then Bershatsky et al. found that we can also get, say, F and G gauge groups and, and more exotic things, B gauge groups, et cetera. And the point is now, um, ag again, that we, we, we are now led by, by, by the geometry. So we, we see not only the A singularities appear, but also the others. So we conjecture that also the other gauge symmetries can, can really appear in, in the physical sense. It, it makes sense in, in this picture, but to, to some extent, this is, if you like, already an extrapolation which shows that we really now rely on this conjecture that, that, that the geometry really gives the, the, the correct physics of the, um, of the M theory. Or do you rely on M theory duality, as you, as you like to see. So, um, and, and the point is that these mathematicians showed how to read off the, or how to determine the type of singularity from the data of the Weierstrass model. So for practical purposes, they left for us a table where they classified the possible types of singularity of F and G and the determinant delta, which then results in uh, uh, the particular type of singularity. So this is all I would like to say about this. So the result now for the Kodaira K3 case was a classification of the t um, in, 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 in this form. So we need to know um, the vanishing of the discriminant, we need to know the vanishing of f and of g. And then we find the singularity type. For example, if we have singularity type of um, if, if um, delta vanishes to order n, but f and g are um, as generic as possible, then we get symmetry or gauge group a n minus 1 or s. SGN. This was the case which we were considering. Only delta picks up a zero. F and G does not pick up a zero um, simultaneously. But then they, as I said, they, they class, classified um, fully on. For example, now N plus 6, let me just copy this just for demonstrational purposes. Here one found, D, sorry, DN plus 4. And in particular, it, it was possible also to find exceptional gauge groups. Say 8, we get then 3. 4 gave us E6, 9, 10, E7, E8, and there were certain constraints here. And there were also other singularity types which do not necessarily lead to, um, <coughs> lead to non trivial gauge groups, like cusp singularities, etc. So this is a non exhaustive list. But for our purposes, and this is what, what is being done in the literature, is to construct a Calabiao um, fourfold, which is hard enough. And then ensure that the, the types of singularities occur, which we might or may not be interested in for phenological reasons. Yes. You find UN symmetries a priori. That's right. Okay, so now, in what you just erased, you were considering a general um, fourfold. Yes. And then looking at a particular singularity. And now what you're doing is you're restricting to K3 as the as base. Here, yeah, this was an. an ex Yes. K3 is, so P1 is the base, so K3 is the Calabria fourfold, so this would be in tender. Uh, um, K3 is the, it's the, the F theory Calabria. P1 is the base on which we compactify type 2B. So, it, so in this particular fourfold, you then. In this particular fourfold, Kodaira showed that this is the classification. This was then generalized by Tate and can be found in a paper by Bershatsky that the same thing occurs also on Calabiao threefolds and on Calabiao fourfolds. The Calabiao fourfolds, now in F theory, are the ones that lead to four-dimensional compactifications because they would be type 2B 
on the base, on the three complex dimensional base, so like a, the Calabi-Yau complexification from type two. So the same, um, the same classification draws over there. It just becomes a little more complicated. That's why you, you, have, to, you have to give more data basically because there are extra monodromies that can change the gauge group. But this, um, so in, actually for all Calabi-Yau n-folds, uh, 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 um, um, a classification like this exists. And here, actually, I'm, okay, I'll come back to this. And the fact that we um, get not only the SUN gauge groups, which we are used to from t a type two, but also exceptional gauge groups, this I will now interpret in terms of PQ brains. And let me, let me say one more thing. Actually, I was lying. The, uh, the classification exists only for um, Calabio threefolds by Berschatsky, but in the literature, this, it's always assumed that the same classification carries over also to Calabio fourfolds. That just as an aside. I'm not aware of anyone who has extended that to four complex dimensions. The simple picture you gave of these two singularities in this P1 between them, that only So once, once one has, one, once one has blown up and, and, and gotten the Dinkin diagram, one, one can still wrap various homological combinations of, of the P1s. They, they don't intersect. They intersect in a more complicated way, as, as for example for, 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 for e, e gauge groups. But there still exists a pre prescription which sums of, of these various P1s intersecting now in, in, the, in the exceptional thinking diagram will lead to, um, uh, to membrane states. But you said just uh, you would need PQ membranes for the exceptional ones. In type 2B language now. I'll, I'll come to that. So these are the ones which are not surprising from type 2B, because this is what we always see in oriented folds. The same thing here. This is what we see when we place the, the brain on top of the O plane. There we get SO gauge groups, as we said. And the, um, and the SP, now I didn't include here. but these ones are truly exceptional, both in the technical and in the actual. So how can we how, how can we how can we understand or how is this understood in terms of um, type two B language? So in type two B. So let's go back a step and forget about the, um, this geometric uh, picture of F theory and, and just do strongly coupled type 2B theory, so to speak. So we know that in type 2B, we have um, two types of strings, so to speak. So first of all, we have the fundamental string, the F string. And we can label it as a 1, 0 string for reasons that become apparent in a second. And then we also have the D string, the 0, 1 string. So this is the D, D1 brain. This object couples to the B field. This object couples, so this couples to B2. This couples to C2. But as was shown in, in 96 by Schwartz, one can also consider BPS bound states of F and D strings. So in particular, a 1-1 one, one string is a BPS bound state of a 1-0 and a 0-1 string. And more generally, a PQ string carries charge P0 under B2, P, charge P under B2, and charge Q under C2. And Schwartz showed that these objects are stable BPS as long as P and Q are co-prime. For P and Q co-prime. So under SL2Z's um, duality, B and C are exchanged. So therefore, also the corresponding um, objects to which they couple must be exchanged. So by SL2Z, SL2Z naturally acts on the PQ string, as this notation already suggests. So under, say, um, 
So um, for, for example, um, SL2Z transforms the one zero string into the PQ string as follows. If we take an, a general SL2Z matrix, then we can write PQ as PQ RS one zero as long as PS minus Q and the uh, SL2Z property is PS minus QR equals one. So this is the well-known appearance of PQ strings in 2B. Now, uh, the now we, we know that uh, the fundamental string can end on a D7 brain. So generalizing this concept, um, Schwartz proposed that um, a PQ string can end on a 7 brain, which is a PQ 7 brain, which is likewise a bound state of a 1, 0, 7 brain, the D brain in this case, and the 0, 1 brain, it's magnetic dual. So type 2B actually contains more brains than just D brains. It contains PQ 7 brains. These are the objects on which a PQ string ends. So in particular, in this notation, a 1, 0 string, this is a D7 brain. This is the object that can be treated perturbatively in, in type 2B orientifolds. For this, we have string perturbation theory. As long as, yeah, I think you can always satisfy, you can always choose R and S such that you've set, can't you? But, but you have R, S, R, S is not well defined. So um, it, the transformation is not completely well defined in, in the sense that R and S is not always. Uh, yeah, you can choose R, S in such a way that this, so there might be one. Then they are not co-primed. It must be co-primed. Didn't I write it? Oh, sorry. OK, so we said, sorry. We, we said a, that, that a one zero brain has a particular monodromy matrix, has associated a monodromy, an SL to Z monodromy matrix, T one zero, which is one one zero. 1, 0. By this, we just mean that C0, as we encircle the 1, 0 brain, shifts by 1. This is the, the little computation which I screwed up last time. Um, so similarly, a PQ brain has a monodromy matrix MPQ. And in fact, by requiring that a PQ string, which ends on a PQ brain, does not, is not acted upon non-trivially, one can show, or one can easily show that um, MPQ is related to this T by GPQ, this GPQ there times T, sorry, GPQ. T times GPQ minus one. So the monodromy of a general PQ brain is one minus PQ, P squared, minus q squared, 1 plus pq. And this mpq, again, is it's chosen in such a way that as we transport a pq string along a pq brain, it does not change, which makes sense because the string can end on it. So it should be compatible, if we like, with the, with the brain on which, on which it can end. However, more generally, if we have, say, a PQ brain sitting here and, a P, and, and some other string, in, uh, a general RS string, so suppose we take an R, have an RS string here, 
coming along, then as we move it around the PQ, it will transform non-trivially. That's the statement that we have in monodromy. So one can draw this in such a way that we assume that there is some branch cat somewhere in going in some direction. So as we go around once, we have to cross that branch cat. And what comes out here is then the MPQ transform of the RS string. Sorry. And so again, a PQ brain string does, is, is not acted upon. So if we take a fundamental string once around the D brain, it doesn't, um, it, it doesn't feel anything. But if we take a 0, 1 brain once around a D brain, it does feel something in SGLT transformation. So the important point is now, if we just consider an is one isolated PQ brain, then by an SL2Z transformation, we can always transform it into a 1, 0 brain. So an isolated PQ brain, 1 isolated PQ brain, can always be transformed into a 1, 0 brain by SL2Z. So in other words, locally, isolated PQ brains have exactly the same properties as 1, 0 brains. Locally, they are completely indistinguishable. However, the trouble starts as soon as we have two or more PQ brains, be it that we have them at the same place or be it that we have them um, um, at finite or at even at infinite or whatever distance, because then there is a difference between the PQ. So in particular, we uh, and um, so two PQ brains of different type are called mutually non-local. And the point of F theory is that it takes into account mutually non-local brains. And this is what will give rise to these exceptional effects which you don't have in, in, um, uh, in type 2, in type 2B. So let's see how this, uh, sorry, let's see how this works. So let's consider um, the following three types of brains. We consider brain A and we fix notation to say that this is, a, say, a D7 brain, a 1, 0 brain. Then we consider our brain B, which have, which I'm choosing as a 3 minus 1 brain, and a brain C, which I'm choosing as a 1 minus 1 brain. So the monodromy of this is, I call the monodromy, so MA is 1, 1, 1, 0. And B, according to this formula, which I raised, is 4, 9, 2, minus 1. And MC is 2, 1, minus 1, 0. OK. So what kinds of states can we get from a brain system of this type? So, or or by, by placing together brains of this type in, 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 in certain manners. So first, let's start with the simplest. Let's take n brains of the same type on top of each other and forget about all the others. So the simplest case is we take a brain system A n. So in other words, we, we think of n brains, 1 up to n. We think of them as being coincident, but now for, for, uh, for the purposes of um, for bookkeeping, let's, let's place them uh, away from each other. So what kinds of so this is the situation which can always be transformed to n 1, 0 brains. So what kinds of strings do we get? We get strings that start and end on the same brain and strings that start and end on two different brains, etc. So in this manner, we get n times n strings. So this is what would give rise to a un gauge theory. So these would be the um, vector states in the adjoint of un. In fact, the u1 usually decoupled. This is a tricky issue. I'm not going to uh, discuss this now. In fact, if we, if we just have this, this brain system isolated um, in the universe, then the, then the overall or the diagonal U1 decouples, so we get SUN. So one of the strings decouples. OK, and note the same, of course, happens for BN. 
and for Cn, because locally they don't care what they are, they don't even know what. Okay, if you say so, I don't know. You, you ch check that. Uh, sorry. Um, okay. But but now let's let's take se uh, let's take several brains of of different type into account. So suppose we put, put on top of each other, we put on top of each other brain system like A to the n, B C. So we have our N brains. Then we have a B brain and we have a C brain. So what kinds of sta states do we get? Again, we get here our N squared from the AA sector. But now, since B and C have a monodromy, and B and MC, it makes a difference how we wrap the string, or uh, the, the path of the string now makes a difference. So we have th these n squared strings are the ones that go along the direct path without crossing this branch cut. So the ones that really go directly from here to there, but they don't cross any branch cut. More generally, if we start now here from, say, this string here, and as we move around here once, the string is converted into something else. And in order for it, now in order for it to be able to end again on an A brain, it must be of one zero type even when it comes back. Because only one zero strings are allowed to end on one zero brains. So we need to make sure, so we need to check what the um, SL2Z ma transformation matrix here is in such a way that the brain can really go, go along this way, say along the, M, the B brain, and end again on the A brain. So let's check this. Um, so we have MB on 1, 0. I hope I didn't screw it up. No, it actually doesn't matter much. Well, in the end, it doesn't. I hope I didn't make a mistake here. But if so, then please check there. Please correct it. So we see that if we go around MB once, we, we don't get a, a 1, 0 string. And if we just go, say, here uh, um, along M MC once, and avoiding MB, we don't get a 1, 0 string either. But the point is that BC has the product of these two, MB times MC on 1, 0, turns out to act simply by a minus sign, by direct multiplication. So a string that starts here and goes once around the two brains is reflected. This is a change of orientation. So a, a, a string is, it, it is still allowed to end on the A-brain with different orientation. In other words, it would go out of the A-brain, another A-brain. So for example, it could start here. I'm, let me remove this now. It could start here and then come back, but re with reverse orientation, something like this. So we can still have um, brains from, uh, strings from A to A as long as they encircle the full of B and C. Now, Gabadil and Zwieberg studied the BPS condition for such brains going around along non-trivial paths. And they found, or actually conjectured, that this is possible only, that this particular path is possible only if the string starts and ends on two different brains. They said that otherwise, it would not satisfy the BPS condition, in their case, as a result of their analysis. So from this sector, from this indirect path, From this indirect path, we get n times n minus 1 AA strings, because we are allowed to start and end only on two different, um, um, on, 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 two, uh, on two different ones. So altogether, we get, excuse me? Um, both, both overall orientations would be OK. So this one, but also this one. So yes, thank you. With, so both orientations. So we have n squared plus n times n minus 1. 
And this is such that it spans the anti-symmetric of SO2n. So this is 2 out of n, I hope. Uh, 2n two, two over 2. So this is the adjoint of SO2n. But what about the strings from the other from B to B? Yeah. Where are you getting this? Apparently not. I don't have a good answer. And I'm not, if someone of you has, this would be very nice. So the, um, this is a, a decoupling issue. In principle, you could imagine this, and you could imagine that. They seem not to be there. It's the, the same reason why, probably, why here this one state decouples from the SUN. Also, you might uh, wonder why now does no, of none of the A strings decouple. So modulo these issues, um, the counting works out. But it would be cool to, 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 to understand this better. I, I don't have a good reason. Why do you have to start with three of these brains? Isn't it enough that three different brains to spend all of that? I mean, if I just like add the indices, could I write the beat as two times a plus one times? But you have to uh, make sure that the you, you, you must multiply the monodromy matrices to span SL to Z. So this is how we get SO2N. In other words, but SO2N, of course, we get also in type to be orientifold. So the interpretation is that the BC system would be the O plane. The bound state of the BC system corresponds in O plane in type 2B. And they, then A to the N BC states, this would be in type 2B language, so in perturbative type 2B language, N brains, N D7 brains, D7 brains, along the O plane. And we'll, we'll say much more about this than in the context of Zen, lim Zen limit and, and K3. And the second thing to note is that if we take A to the 4 BC, then it turns out that the monodromy matrix, matrix is just minus 1, not just acting on the one, one zero string, but uh, as, as a full acting on anything. So in this case, we have, so to speak, no monon mo monodromy at all, we have canceled the charge of the O-plane locally by putting the correct amount of brain charge on top of it. Again, in agreement with the fact that the O-plane has minus four. And the minus one here is just the fact that we, um, that, that we have an orientifold action still to take into account. Well, it's to the negative tension of the O-plane uh, when you view this as a uh, of e and C can, can we postpone this question until we get there? Thank you. Yeah, I think it's, we, we should. OK, so this was the appearance of SO. Now we get to exceptional brains, ex exceptional symmetries. Gabadil and Zwieberg, in, in this very nice paper, they played more um, non-trivial games with, these, with this ABC collection. So in particular, maybe I should go here. In particular, they considered a configuration of this type, a to the 5 b c squared, a to the 6 b c squared, a to the 7 b c squared. And they found that the corresponding strings just give the adjoint of a 6, of a 7, and of e 8. So maybe we go through this quickly, because it's, it's really a, a very nice picture. So we take. We take 5A5, five 5A five, five brains. We have 1B brain, and we have 2C brains. So again, we get, first of all, the um, 24 plus 1. Again, the decoupling issue. We, in the end, we have to fix it such that it works, but I, I don't know why. From the direct path, now we get, again, the indirect path. So we can start on B and on, C, uh, on A, go around this one here. This would give us a 10, so 2 out of 5, and plus, plus, the, um, plus the 10 bar. So come back to that. But we can also go 
along this path. So avoid this one here. So we get two copies of 10 and 10 bar. So um, this is the, the, the path before we get a 10 plus 10 bar from BC1 and a 10 plus 10 bar from BC2. Now the C brains, we do get strings starting and ending on C1, just on direct path. So this would give us, so from the CC direct, we get the 3 plus 1 um, from, um, yeah, the, so to speak, the adjoint of SC2, which is spanned by, by, by the C1 and C2. But now comes the interesting point. We can also now consider strings starting on C1, on one C1, ending on the other C1, and going along a non-trivial path. And what they found is that the same orientation rever uh, reversion <coughs> happens as, wait a minute, let, let, let me check if that's correct. Is it the minus, yes, sorry. The same orientation reversion happens uh, um, if we encircle one B brain and four copies of A brains. So if we go along here and then say the first four and then end there, again with orientation reversion, and then this is possible. So and they found that um, MA to the 4 times MB on the C string, which is the 1 minus 1 string, this is the C string, equals minus 1 times 1 minus 1. So we get the possible states. And now the funny thing is we get, we, we get five types of different states because there are five ways of singling out 1A that is not allowed to contribute. So in other words, we construct the five, but we don't construct it as a fundamental, the five of SU5, but not as a fundamental, but as the fourfold anti-symmetric. So from this, we get five plus five bar, and we realize it as four out of five, because we pick four out of the five as the ones which we don't encircle. And if one adds this up, then one sees that one exactly recovers the splitting uh, or the, uh, the breaking of E6 to SU5 times SU2 times U1, which we would get literally by separating the B and the two Cs um, from, from the A's. So the um, AD7 splits up into the 24, the 3, and the 1. Again, this U1 and the counting here is a mystery to me but we get a 10 2 plus a 10 bar 2 because each 10 represents as a doublet under C1, depending on where we, where we go. And we get a 5 and a 5 bar. And the funny thing is, the appearance of, say, just, just for experts now, the appearance of the 10 10 5 coupling in F theory is exactly due to this effect because we now can interpret our fives as the fourfold anti-symmetric. So um, well, what they also showed, showed um, um, Zwieberg at, uh, um, Gabadil and Zwieberg is that the, um, these strings can first be interpreted as multi-pronged strings, so strings um, bound states of several, several ending strings because as, we, as one um, draws one string over such a branch cat, one, one gets basically the hadani witten effect. And these strings can, can now um, combine in such a way that they form the, um, triple, um, intersect, um, the, the um, uh, triple interaction of, um, of the adjoint of E8. So this is the origin of, um, of these um, phenological couplings based on exception gauge groups. In. So can I see how I break down the E6 SO10 plus U1? Nice. Yes, you would. You would take. You would probably remove one of the C's. So then you get H to the five BC, which is SO10, and then this one. But this game works out. It works out okay in eight dimensions, because, but as soon as one tries to make non-trivial statements in lower dimensions, one is in trouble. So it would be very nice to understand this better also in, in lower dimensions. But there will be 
as soon as we go already to now to, to six dimensions, it's not so clear where to where the branch cat lies, how you are allowed to go around. So you you get in, in complete trouble if you want to reproduce um, the uh, mathematical results in lower dimensions. But still, it's it's nice to have this as a picture. And this is where where the actual power of, of um, F theory comes in. As I said, from the type to B point of view. So f first of all, from, from the type to B point of view, it's not at all clear why you can take say a to the 5, b, and c squared on top of each other. Why is this allowed to form a good bound state? I'm not aware of a, um, of a, of a good explanation. But in, from F theory, we, so in retrospect, this might be the, will be the explanation. But in, in, in F theory, we simply trust the geometry and the, the, um, the, the geometric similarities, and then we get automatically what is allowed and what is not allowed. So this is the big plus in, in that picture. But is it a simple way by this In principle, you can. This is also a non-exhaustive list. It was then, um, so you can also find H series, say, uh, other ways of getting M, M, A, N. Um, in so mathematically, I think it does not terminate. But again, why? how many brains we are actually allowed to put on each other? From the 2B perspective, hard to determine because we don't have a fundamental theory of these PQ brains. But in, in F theory, we simply see what the similarity gives us. But all of these must give a deficit angle, right? The, the SL2Z doesn't act on the metrics. Overall, the overall deficit angle must vanish. Yeah. In a compact, yes. We'll see, we'll see, thank you, we'll see this argument then. Or the, 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 the yeah. I know. No, 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 no uh, prob pr probably you're right, yes. But I have no idea of the question. <laughs> so it, it does, yes, it, it, it does restrict sometimes, but I'm not aware of a complete classification. So I couldn't tell you now if, why, why you can't have an E9 here, if, if you could arrange for the deficit angle. Isn't, it, isn't the truncation the, the end of the quadratic? Yes, but this is what we yeah, want. But after that, it's no longer collabiality. It's blowing up, and so then it's not super symmetric. So the F theory yes, but you're using, you're using our F theory. We, want, we wanted to see this from 2B. Yeah, yeah, okay, but I'm saying that, that's the physical truncation. That exactly, but for the, this is exactly why you need F theory. Yeah. Oh, or what, whatever, but yeah. by this picture, as nice as it is, as it is, seems at least to date not to be sufficient. So I, I wouldn't just from this one could one would write down a eight b c squared would be perfectly happy. But apparently, it's, it seems not at least not in the Kudaira type. Then the Kudaira, there are also other singularities that not just do not fall into this. Yeah, and if you like to learn, learn more, then please do consult Gabadil and Zwieberg. I think sometimes 97, and then it was further worked out also by Zwieberg and De Wolf in a series of papers. Okay, so after this interlude, yeah, we would like to go back to our geometric description. Um, of, of the Weierstrass model, so let's fill in some, some gaps of the Weierstrass model, which I didn't, which I didn't include in the first place. So, um, again, cal um, elliptic, uh, what is my oh. elliptic color Bayard of this type. So we have an elliptic vibration. So we have a map from the vibration from the color Bayard fourfold to the base as such. And now I would like to state a theorem by Kodaira for this type of Weierstrass models which states that the first churn class of the, um, of the Calabria fourfold is given by the first churn class of the base plus the class of the degenerations. So Kodaira, this is again true strictly for K3 and true with certain, um, yeah, by, by sweeping things under the carpet also for higher dimensions, which we don't need. Else. So C1 of Ty is given by the first churn class of C1 of Tb, now interpreted as a class on the full Calabria fourfold, plus the, sorry, minus the class of the degenerations. And the degenerations, I will write in this manner, delta gamma i. So what do we mean by this? So we said, in this notation, we say that the delta, the discriminant, has a zero of order 
AI along gamma I. Yeah? So we have um, our space, we have certain cycles gamma I. Here, here we have degeneration A, A1, A2, A3, A4. These form four cycles, say, and the corresponding and the dual forms are the delta gamma i. And the statement is that the first chunk class of the Calabi-Yau is the one of the base minus the one from the, from the singularity. How does that end up as an integer with one over 12? In consistent models, it has to. The, the AI had to be such that it does. Okay. Namely, because, so even, even more strongly, so this is already one very strong constraint which you um, mentioned, but more strongly, we said that by n equal one supersymmetry, the elliptic vibration has to be Calabi-Yau. This was by this uh, M-theory duality argument. C1 of Ty must be zero. So sum over all i, a i, delta gamma i, must be 12 times C1 of Tb as a constraint of our compactification. So in particular, this shows that the base is not Calabi-Yau. It must be curved, <coughs> must have a non-trivial curvature. And the curvature must actually be positive in the sense that the first churn class of this is the dual of a physical cycle on our base along which we have a degeneration, or along which we have a seven brain wrapped. So the base is not Calabi-Yau. And the amount of allowed seven brains is encoded geometrically, or is given, is dictated by C1 of Tb. And this is, of course, fantastic if one compares this to the situation in type 2b models. In type 2b models, we have to satisfy the D7 brain tadpole cancellation by hand. So we have the amount of, of admissible seven brains from the topological point of view is constrained by the tadpole cancellation condition. This one for the D7 brain, this one is that we take Ni seven brains along the cycle. This must equal four times the cycle of our 07 plane. But in type 2b, we have to, we have to ensure this by hand. We are having this, this, um, yeah, this, uh, well, whatever. We, 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 put, we, we, we put this in by hand. In F theory, it comes out automatically. So this is already one nice. Does F theory always have an effective 07 plane? Yes, it, it, wraps, it wraps an effective cycle. So it, it wraps, a, uh, the, the 07 plane is the fixed point set of, the, of this involution, and this must be a physical cycle, so an effective device. I would just, uh, um, so this here will become, the, is this from the 2B point of view? So from that perspective, it's natural to identify the two. And we will see this also in the K3 example. That so um, the, on, on the left-hand side, on, on the left-hand side, we have, we, we see what, where we can put brains on which cycles, and the, the order of the vanishing. So this is basically the number of the brains which we have. It's, the, it's always the order of the discriminants, the number of the brains. And the, um, the equation which constrains this in type 2b is the turbo cancellation condition where it reads this. So one would probably say in a, hand, in a fishy way that the charge of the O-plane is resolved in the, in the, in the positive curvature of, of the base, if that makes sense. Well, com so by direct comparison, say for K3 case, but also, no, in, in, in other cases where one has an uplift, it turns out that this, they are the same. Mm -hmm. 
Well, the, this is partly hidden in the yeah. This is hidden in the AI, so to speak. <coughs> yes. So for yeah. So it, it makes sure that it works out that it works out fine. But in in type two B, as so for if we take A, B, and C brains, this is probably abso absolutely essential to to satisfy this constraint that the, everything curves uh, that the total monodromy vanishes. In type two B, I think it's correct to say that as long as we only take D7 brains and only O planes, then as long as this is satisfied, then the corresponding curving issue in the uplift would be satisfied too. So would you, would you agree? Pardon me? So does an O7 plane have a sort of, add, does it add a bit? Does it have a negative it deficit? It has no negative tension. Yeah, well that's why I'm asking. So it gives you a ne negative deficit. Because then you can imagine that, the, that this other sort of condition may encode that as well, right? Because you add some extra O7, so that gives you the extra plane. Yeah, it, it has the opposite deficit angle too. So it does. Because if you put it on top of each other, you, you get a good flat space. Right? If you just have right. all, all your tadpoles right. satisfied that's good. at that point. So I could believe that maybe. It's not that all. It's not true that all type to be or any code models which you can write down and satisfy this condition can be uplifted. Uh, there are certain gauge groups not even appearing in the list of the code. That's probably true, but I'm not sure why this is so. And there are certain representations which we haven't found yet either. I think when the safer it says that the F field condition is stronger. <laughs> so what's the interpretation of the one she can't uplift? Is that it's clear, I think. So it's, it's not so clear. Yeah. 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 Really yeah. There must be some the back reaction must be so strong or must be so strange that you can't fit it into into a color of so it's a, so it, but would the interpretation be that somehow maybe the two key description is six? Yeah. Yeah. Not interpreting if it's sick. If you take the back reaction into account. Yes. Do you agree? I mean, I yes, I do agree. I fully agree. Timo, so, yeah. What does this constraint mean in terms of the biostress function? The Thank you. <laughs> so, biostress. So um, in the in the Weierstrass model we had, which I, I won't put down now um, again, we have this form. We have f and g varying over the base. So we said that f and g, if we have a description of b in terms of, say, a local coordinate patch, f and g must be functions of of the coordinates. They must be polynomials of the coordinates. Polynomials of u i. In fact, they are not functions if we have just local patches, but they are sections of line bundles, meaning that they can that they may, might not be globally defined. Uh, in the, oh, rather that one has to transform them as one goes from one from one set to another. So actually they must be sections of a line bundle. And let's call this line bundle L a line bundle on B. So uh, a function that transforms, so, so to speak, or patchwise defined function. For example, now if we if we think of B as say a projective space, then f and g are su is some homogeneous function in these projective coordinates. But the Weierstrass model as such should transform homogeneously under the um, identifications under the projections on the base. So therefore, also x and y must transform under if we now really patch it together. Um, in a well-defined man manner, or promote this um, torus to a, to a fabrication in a well-defined manner, then x and y must transform as well under this projection, under this projective identification. So also y and x and z must be sections, suitable sections of L. So homogeneity now implies the following. Say, we can always take z to be the trivial section. So let's, let's take z to be a section of O. So 
So it doesn't transform. Otherwise, we would have one overall freedom, degree of freedom, which we can divide out because we have a homogeneous equation. Just the, just the trivial bundle, the section of the trivial bundle. So it does not vary on, on, on. So we could write down anything here, but then all, we divide out by one factor again, such that this. So now we need to make sure so um, that um, this can scale appropriately. And since we have the 2 and the 3 here, um, we need for g a section of the bundle L to the 6. Say, then for x, we need um, L, to the L to the 2. For y, we need L to the 3. Did I do it right? Yes. And then for f, we need L to the 4. So that it scales. So, think of this. We, we, we'll see how to how to interpret this now on the on the P one. So some polynomial of suitable degree. This is how we can think of it. Um, then it is um, homogeneous. But now the discriminant delta, which is cube, uh, sorry, which is cubic in F. This is a section of L to the twelve. But due to this condition, this is actually delta basically, or not basically. This is delta because it's the union of the full discriminant. So this means that delta must be a section of 12 times the, of, of the 12th power of the um, um, uh, tangent bundle. So L must be the tangent bundle on the base B by the color BR condition. Can I erase? Yeah. Yeah, this is the smear, yeah. So because of the question which was asked mm -hmm. before, so there, it, it's much, it's much stronger condition that this is a Calabial manifold than just this uh, cancellation in, in, in the homology mm -hmm. classes. And there also your comment implies that this was only shown for K3. If you have higher dimensional Calabial manifold, also lower dimensional. That's right, but they don't. Could contribute, but they turn out not to. I think that's the. Yeah, it's, it's the yes, I'm not aware of a case where they do. Yes. No, this is, the this is the stronger version of the D7 brain action. The fluxes are, are a totally separate issue, which I haven't touched upon at all. So the, the, D3, the fluxes would feed into the D3 brain tadpole cancellation condition. And that's. Not into the D7 brain. That's right, yes. Yeah. Because they induce lower dimensional. So we have D5 and D3. So I won't say anything about fluxes. Maybe I should have said this from the beginning, sorry. So we see um, from the Calabial condition, L must be TB. And this, of course, is useful now if one wants to apply this to, to um, concrete examples. So let's go to the last point, application. Um, simplest case, F theory on K3. So we, ta we compactify on. K3, which. This is not correct statement. It's not TB, it's the anti canonical bundle of B. It's my bundle. KB to the minus 1. But C1 of, C1 of L is C1 of TB. Yes, but not TB itself. Thank you. Yeah, so. so the K3, thank you. The <laughs> the K3, um, so we, we compactify in K3. K3 is, and we take K3 to be elliptically fibered. So we take an elliptic vibration 
over P1. So here we have our coordinates x, y, z. And the P1 is the base of this elliptic vibration. So this I should have said. K3 can be, is in certain regimes of moduli space a, an elliptic vibration over P1. And the, um, for the P1, we then introduce homogeneous coordinates uv. And they are um, identified as mu u mu v. Sorry. This is then, these are then just the homogeneous coordinates on P1. So we need now the tangent bundle or the anti canonical bundle of, of the P1 in order to, um, to, to satisfy this. The, um, this condition. So the anti it turns out that the first churn class of the anti canonical bundle, or the first churn class of the tangent bundle of a P1, is two in the sense that it's two times the normalized volume form on the P1, where J is the normalized volume form of. P1. So in other words, the integral of this first churn class over P1 gives 2. So this means that, um, yeah, so, so the, 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 this is the statement. So and the way how this is usually phrased is that, or written down, KP1 to the minus 1 equals the bundle on P1 with first churn class 2, with degree 2. Since we only have one volume form, there's only one number, one degree that we need to specify. And that's, that's the one. One can see this, for example, by Riemann-Roch because chi is 0, chi, which is 2 minus 2g, is the integral of this. So, uh, sorry, chi is 2. G is 0. OK, what else? So in other words, we can think of a section of this bundle as a homogeneous polynomial of degree 2 in u and v. And there are three such, su such sections. So, uh, OK, so uh, a section of Kb to the minus 1, so a section K of Kb to the minus 1, Kb1. This is a um, homogeneous polynomial in U and V of degree 2. So. Our Weierstrass model now is made of the following coordinates. We have uv for the base, then x, y, z for the fiber. And this is now identified mu u, mu v. Sorry. And then we have the scaling relations for the x and the y, which are just erased. And they boil down x was l to, this, l to the 2. So it, it scales like now mu to the 4, because uh, the tangent bundle, or the anti-canonical bundle is L. So we have now mu to the 4 for the other one. For y, we had mu to the 6. And for z, we had mu to the 0. This is now the uh, pr uh, one projective identification that descends from the base. But in addition, we have the one that acts entirely on the fiber, which we had before, which makes the p231, which has nothing to do with the base. So where we had lambda squared x lambda cubed y lambda c. So now we need to um, define our functions f or our sections f and g as appropriate polynomials. f was a polynomial was of degree 4, so was L to, a section of L to the 4. So it's now a polynomial of degree 8 in u and v. g is a polynomial of 12 in u and v, because it was a section of L to the 6. And delta is a po polynomial of 24, because it was of degree 12 or of multiplicity 12 here. Okay. So from, uh, from now on, let's set v to 1 by the first scaling relation here. Then one sees that delta, which is a polynomial of degree 24 in u, has in general 24 zeros. So it can be expanded as i equals 1 up to 24, u minus ui. And at each of the UIs, we get a 0, we get a 7 brain. So 
we get 24 seven brains in this picture. Or in other words, since this is degree 24, this and, and the other one was, um, yeah, whatever. However, as then, as then noted, so this was of course done by Zen for the first time in detail. So as then noted, and as you pointed out, the overall monodromy of the brains has to cancel. Because if we think of now the, uh, um, 24 brains on a P1, so we have here our brain somewhere. As we go once around all these brains, this is the same as going once around from the other side where there are no brains. So the overall monodromy must be zero, must cancel, must vanish. So not all of these 24 brains can be A brains, because otherwise we would just have monodromy A to the 4. But some of these brains must be of different B and C type, such that the monodromy um, condition that, that it vanishes is, is satisfied. And there are different ways of taking the brains as A, B, and C brains. This is, there is no universal answer, not even the number of A, B, and C brains is, is universal. But then for first looked at a solution where we have actually four B brains, four C brains, and 16 A brains. This is the solution which he found. But there are others, and the number of A, B, and C is not, un is not conserved. So from the 2B point of view, we would be in trouble. But in F theory, it, it comes out right. So what Zen does, did is he tried to recover the 2B limit. And first he tried to recover the exact 2B limit, where all charges are canceled locally. So where all charges cancel locally. So the one, in other words, in this case, we have we expect a constant dilaton, a dilaton that does not vary, that has not any, um, a, any profile. So he um, looked at the expression for j and insisted that j be constant so, such that tau be constant. And in this case, um, um, uh, we would expect local cancellation. So from the form of j, he made the following ansatz. So made, then made the following ansatz. He took g to be a polynomial now, say, of degree 3 in the U, in U, and F a polynomial of degree 4, uh, sorry, of degree 2. And actually, the, he, he left one constant, alpha, this is just a constant, one modulus that he wanted to, to leave unfixed. Because the, the point was now that um, in this case, F and G cancel out completely from J so that there, that there is no u dependence of j. So delta, if one plugs in, well, is given by this product. OK, and sorry, and this p, of course, had to be, due to the scaling before, a function of degree 4. So e equals 1 up to 4 u minus ui. Right, so uh, delta now, now plugging this in gives this, and using this, i equal 1 up to 4, u minus ui to the 6 from the, from, the, from, from the degree of delta. So j of tau is this 4 times 24 a cubed, alpha cubed, over this delta, 4 alpha cubed plus 27. So it's constant. So tau is constant by construction. And in particular, so, and, and we see that Alpha is now one modulus, so to speak. It's one modulus. It, it, it was one of the moduli of, of F, namely the overall scaling modulus. So if we fix P and um, if we fix P completely, we have fixed all the complex structure moduli except for one, and this one, which we are um, left with, is, uh, determines the size of tau. So if we make sure that the denominator vanishes, J of tau goes to infinity. And then by this, um, uh, since j is e to the minus 2 pi i tau, this means that tau goes to i, plus inf I times infinity, so gs goes to 0 from, from the arguments or from the formula that we had last time. So as 4 alpha primed to 
goes to zero, if we choose this by hand, so to speak, to zero, we find that tau goes to i infinity, or gs goes to zero. And this is the honest weak coupling limit. If we don't take this, then we can take the dilaton to be arbitrarily large, but it's still constant. But the weak coupling is um, this extra modulus. So the geometric interpretation which he, which he now gave is that the discriminant from the discriminant one sees that we have four stacks of brains and on each stack of brain we have obviously six brains sitting. So the geometric interpretation we have four stacks of six brains each at ui, i, i equals one up to four. And in fact, he looked a little closer and, 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 and tried to uh, identify the monodromy matrix around each of these uis. It's actually not, not that hard. He basically he used the, um, this, one function, this one form on the torus and, and um, saw that there is a monodromy as we go around each of these u1s and then found that there is a monodromy of minus 1, 0, 0, minus 1 around each, PI, each UI. So he interprets this as having exact cancellation of O plane charge by four A brains on top of a BC system, exactly the one that we, that we saw. So he interpreted this as having A to the four BC, six brains. And he, so we have at U1, at U2, U3, U4 on our P1. And along each of them, we have one orientifold action. So the gauge group then was SO8 to the 4, which is the one that one gets by type 2B and type 2B orientifold on T2 over Z2. So this was the perturbative type 2B gauge group. So, but, but, but now we're coming back to um, this essential question, what happens if we do not cancel all the tadpole and all the charges locally anymore? So then also looked at what happens as we, say, remove one of the A brains from the BC system. So, um, or if we remove all of the A brains from the BC system. In that case, we would get this naked O plane, at least close, um, um, close to the BC system. So um, we, we would expect getting into trouble. So he deformed now in his mind this system to the one where we have just BC and then four A brains, we remove them. And he looked at what the asymptotic or the, um, the, the local expression for tau would be. And tau of z would now go, go like the contribution from so, so now we call these, say, wi, wi here. Um, this is the contribution from the seven brains. But since the BC system has exactly the same chart but opposite, because otherwise it couldn't cancel locally, we get a minus 4 from here. And this is exactly the negative tension, or in this case, the negative charge that we see from the, from the O plane. This is u0. So OK, and in addition, he said we have, um, so this is, this is the solution close to the brains, but there is an asymptotic value, say, set by the other brains far away, so plus some tau naught. This is how he parameterized it. But he, he said that as we go to far away, uh, as we go close to the, to the BC brain now, 
then the imaginary part of tau will become negative, depending, of course, on the value of tau zero. But there will be a characteristic distance where it becomes negative and where the, where the supergravity solution breaks down. And he basically neglected this part and then um, uh, estimated that imaginary part of tau zero becomes negative. For, so we, we put this on the other side and um, evaluate. And this is then smaller for u minus u zero e to the minus pi over 2 imaginary of tau 0, depending on tau 0. If this is very large, we can neglect this. We can neglect this. But what he then showed, or actually conjectured, uh, I'm not sure how much, how much he really showed it, because he put a lot in already from the beginning, um, is that it, um, this naked singularity, so to speak, this, uh, the, the singular behavior is cured in F theory because the B and the C brains split. So he found, or conjectured, or I don't know how to put it, the BC system, the BC brains split. The O plane, I should put it this way, the O plane splits into separate B and C. Separated. So we become something like this. And he conjectured that that distance is large enough so that um, that, that the distance is larger than this region where you had the singularity before. So one could, I think, I hope, I, I think it's correct also to view it this way: that as soon as they are split locally, both B and C can be transformed by SL two Z to a single, to, to, to simply an A singularity. Uh, sorry, to simply an A brain. So as soon as they are split locally, they should behave in the same manner as the um, as all the other brains. So there's no singularity left. Of, uh, the negative tension. Yeah. How do you think of that in the system? Because the, when they're coincident, you have a negative tension on them. When you split them, what tension do you do? They should add up in such a way that. How would one, how would one add this up? Can, can, can one make sure that. I don't know. Th that there is a cancellation somehow? Or? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, I'm confused. I mean, yeah, let's discuss that. I, I don't have a, a, a better answer now. I know. SL2Z can transform the exodility profile around that thing, but not the tension. That is, I mean, if, if the B by itself, for instance, has negative tension, that's not going to change by itself. But can that so turn into some kind of back, uh, the, the curvature of the metric or something? Sorry? I mean, can the negative tension be coming from the new curvature of the metric or something? So usually it's mumbled that the, yeah, that, that the non-perturbative dynamics makes sure that the B and C split. So it, yeah, it would be nice. So, this must have been discussed somewhere. I, I mean, it's, it's a decade-old question. I, I can say more, th more than that, but uh, it would be cool if we could discuss that. Is, is separating them, is that a flat direction? Modulate? That's also a very good question. Is it really dynamical, or are the moduli fixed? That's also very confusing, because so probably the feeling would be that one does not lose moduli. That's my interpretation, because the, the, so the complex structure, the dilaton, and the brain moduli of 2B are all mapped into complex structure of, uh, of the F-theory color BL. So without any fluxes, one would not see how, how, this would, how, they would be, how, how they would be fixed. Fixed, really, in the sense that one loses a modulus. And that it's, it's, on the other hand, it's a, it's a dynamical mechanism. So the, the brains absolutely repel. They don't want to stay there. This is how we're confused. So you say there is a corresponding modulus just corresponding to the separation in the F theory, or in the fire. Hmm. I think so, yeah. You can identify the separation of the thing with the aspectic module of the So you would have just given the top, the couple of aspectic, which is in the collapse, and you would have just converted. 
Okay, because of basically because of this, it, it will make sure that. They have another row. Yeah, that's probably a good point. And the tau, and the tau zero, that that of course is a modulus which we fix by hand in in terms of the alpha here, in our. Yeah, that, that, that's good. So we one one as one fixes the brain moduli, the the. As one fixes all complex fraction moduli, the, the Dillerton separation is fixed too, but that does not mean that there is more dynamics to fix the, the total number of moduli. We don't lose moduli. We just get one as a function of the others. So, yeah. Let, we, we, we should keep discussing that. It would be nice if we had better understanding. Let me just point out one more thing that similar, um, similar non-perturbative um, phenomena with the, um, with, with the D-brains also occur in, in higher dimensions. For example, OK, I will, I will stop very soon. Let me, if we, maybe I, I just do it by. For example, if one takes the Zen limit of a, of a uh, construction of, um, of intersecting brains, which not necessarily lie on top of each other, um, it turns out that, so th this is then the, the stronger version of the, of the Zen limit. There, he just made a parameterization of this type, f equals minus 3h squared plus epsilon eta, g equals minus 2h cubed plus epsilon h eta minus epsilon squared k over 12, just for references. So he made this ansatz. This is the most generic ansatz. Eta now is, uh, is still a number. But then what he found is that the corresponding delta of this is something of this type, h squared times eta squared minus h chi plus order epsilon squared. So if we take epsilon to be large, this object here is just one horrible polynomial and this just, give, just gives one lo brain locus. So there's, there's just one brain, which is um, the, the bound state of all brains in type 2b, so to speak. But as we, as we neglect higher orders in epsilon and, get, and just look at the lowest order, then we see that the discriminant gets, uh, it factorizes. It factorizes into two pieces. And then identified this piece as the O plane and this piece as the remnants of all seven brains or the, the recombination of all seven brains in type 2b language, or d seven brains, or, well, tricky, but. So the, the, st uh, so the statement is that, so h squared equals zero is an O-plane, perturbatively, eta squared minus h chi is a seven brain. So again, we see that as we switch on epsilon, as we don't take epsilon equals zero, the O plane and the seven brain, in this case, recombine. So now it's basically the, I don't know, the, the, the other way around. So there is non-perturbative dynamics here that, um, th that really changes the, um, uh, the situation. The reason is that we have not canceled the charges locally. We, we would have uh, a generic situation, some O plane, and then, um, uh, and then here some brains. In fact, um, as Andres and um, also, the Herberger group pointed out that the seven brain here has always to be of this very special type. Uh, the, the seven brain has to be of this very special type. But as we, so we have non-local charge cancellation, and as we, as we now take into account these F-theory effects, this all becomes one, one, one smeared object. So this is certainly something very, very fascinating that one would like to understand better, maybe even dynamically, and how, how one can actually describe that. Sorry, is the statement that there is no negative tension object in the quantum theory, and it only exists when the coupling goes to zero? Maybe one could put it this way. Yes. Yeah. Seems plausible. Yeah. But the nice thing again is. We didn't have to work for this at all. We just took the Calabiao. We trusted the Calabiao. The Calabiao knows that. And now we are left trying to, trying to understand what it wants to tell us. But it, 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 it does the right thing for us automatically. So it's like, basically, it's free lunch. 
Okay, so um, let me let, um, just one last um, comment now um, in terms of um, as preparation, so to speak, for the for the for the F theory week. What people are doing nowadays in this um, F theory model building is to look at very specific brain configurations, where in addition to these gauge groups, one also finds matter and um, interactions. So the the structure here is the following: as we saw already, we have seven we have the gauge groups. along a divisor, gamma, as two divisors intersect, they intersect over a curve. So gamma A and gamma B, this is a curve, CAB, on the base. It turns out, as shown by buffer and cuts, even 10 years ago, um, more than 10 years ago, that, the, um, that here the singularity type enhances even further from the Weierstrass model. So here we have enhanced singularity. So for example, if we take n brains and one brain, then we, we enhance the SUN times the U1. I'm drawing it this way now. It's not clear if it's conserved or not. To an SUN plus 1. And now as we, so on this curve, we now have an adjoint of n plus 1, of US n plus 1. And this actually decomposes into the various adjoints, the sum of the adjoints, plus extra matter, by fundamental matter, in this case the 1 plus the CC. And this is where now extra localized matter would occur in FDV. And this again can be read off from just from the degenerations of the Calabiao, and particularly here now the state model, which is just a more elaborate way to rewrite um, the Weierstrass uh, model becomes particularly use useful. And as two or more such curves, such curves intersect, the massless degrees of freedom interact via the triple intersection or uh, the Yukawa the coupling, which they, are in, which they inherit from an underlying E8 gauge theory. So at CAB, CBC, CZA, so to speak, this is in quotation marks, we have interaction terms. And a great deal yeah, of, of the work is now to construct such elliptic fourfolds. This is non-trivial to um, really find the, uh, as consistent Calabria fourfolds, not just the base, but re really uh, the Calabria fourfold, and to, um, to, to single out uh, or, 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 or to really find the various um, intersections. And as a last comment, as Gabriele pointed out, in addition, we need gauge flux. This was really literally just 50% at most of the, um, of the story. We need gauge flux in order to um, ensure that we have a chiral spectrum on the brains, on, on these intersection curves, the same as in the seven brains. And so this gauge flux, in principle, comes from G4 flux from M theory, but also this is um, currently not, not really well understood. And so there, is, uh, there are a, a, a lot of technical also developments still to be made. And of course, about the um, phenomenology and the propaganda of the phenomenology, uh, we will hear in two weeks as well. OK, so thanks for your patience. Um, they, they don't cancel exactly. We still have the, the, the overall minus one. So we have a deficit angle of pi. So that, that because there's yes, the, the oriented fold, the Z2 by which we quotient is and still and present. That adds up to these four pi, the uh, C1. Yes. But there's no energy source uh, that Well, they add up to zero in the double cover, right? Um, 
they add up to zero in the They can't add up to zero, otherwise you wouldn't have a yeah, complex space. Right, right, right. Right. Well, that's my question. Yeah. Okay, so they add up such that you get a sphere. <laughs> But it has to be four months. It's T2 months each array, not P1. It's T2 of the two. Yeah, so like it's, there's an awful identification of each one of those four points. So it's flat. Uh, I mean, so it's not really, I mean, it's a T1 in that limit. So, the, the so, there, so there is a geometric deficit angle. Okay, but it's not sourced by some, so it's not like a deficit thing sourced by a cosmic string type meta source thing. Yeah, I think so. And, and and the string has an 07 and 47s. But those tensions cancel. Yeah. But that, like the charges cancel. And if, if the tensions would cancel, then they would not be mutually good yes. Yeah, but if you take the Columbian double cover of the P1, mm -hmm. so if you take the auxiliary space that you're in to fold it to begin with, that one is collabial, right? So it's richly flat. So in that picture, all tensions do cancel. But for the theory picture, he actually takes the geometric quotient of that collabial, and then you know, so that kind of obscures the fact that you did cancel tensions. I don't know something how how are the tensions affected by the uh, homophones? Yeah, by the quotient. Change the tensions. Is there another more? The orbifold tension. Oh, yeah, if you go from a columbial to positive curvature thing, so the orbifold does affect. Yeah, that's It's also possible that uh, there's a factor of two somewhere which we're missing. It's possible that the O7 thing has charged me. Everybody's tired now. <laughs>